Welcome to the Utah Valley University IV Fluid Setup and Calculations video. Today we'll be demonstrating how to prepare an IV line and set a drip rate. First, we'll be gathering our supplies for this demonstration. This is our bag of fluid, which for this demonstration is filled with normal saline, often referred to as NS. This is the IV pole where we'll be hanging our IV solution. Next, we'll grab the administration set. The administration set is used to connect the IV bag to the patient and also set the IV drip rate. Now that we have introduced the various components, we'll open our bag of saline and hang it on the IV pole. A reminder about discarding trash into the garbage container. It's good to form the habit of not dropping your hands below your waist level, since in an actual sterile procedure, dropping your hands below waist level is breaking the sterile field. Now that we have hung the IV bag, we'll open the administration set. Again, discard trash from waist height and don't be concerned if what is being dropped doesn't fall into the trash. Withdraw the administration set from the package and unwind it being careful not to dislodge the protective caps which cover the sterile ends. The spike and the drip chamber are located on the end of the administration set which will be inserted into the IV bag. Before we spike our bag of saline, we need to occlude our line by setting our drip rate to off. This prevents us from making a mess when we spike our solution. With an open line, we could have saline leaking all over the floor. Now we will spike the bag. On the bottom of this IV bag are insertion sites, one with a removable plug and one for needle insertion. This is our removable plug. On the top of the administration set is a sterile cap over the spike. Remove the cap making sure to maintain sterility by not touching the spike. Remove the blue plug from the bottom of the bag making sure not to touch the area the plug was just removed from. With your dominant hand insert the spike into the solution bag completely covering the spike. Fill the drip chamber by squeezing it until the fluid reaches the imprinted line or two-thirds full if the line is not present. The next step will be to prime the administration line. You will open the dial which will allow the saline solution to flow through the line and purge all of the air. You will drain this into a container, trash receptacle, or an emesis basin as seen. Priming the line is done with the sterile cap still on the line. Once the line is inspected and you have determined that all air bubbles have been purged, turn the dial to the off position and close the clear cover over the dial. It's time to connect the administration set to the patient. You will need to remove the sterile caps that are on the end of the administration set as well as on the IV extension line which has been connected to the patient's IV catheter. The type of connection we use here is called a lure lock connection. Like with most syringes and needles, the two connectors screw together. Be sure to maintain sterility. Now that we have our administration set connected to both the solution bag and patient, we can start our infusion and set our drip rate. In this case, we will be setting our drip rate to 100 milliliters per hour. Once we set our drip rate, we will want to manually confirm it by counting our drops per minute in the drip chamber. 100 milliliters per hour with a drop factor of 15 drops per milliliter should be 25 drops per minute. Administration sets may vary in how they look and function. This is an example of a different type. It has a drip chamber with a roller clamp. The speed of the infusion is set manually by the wheel. The wheel is rolled up to open the line and increase the rate of infusion. 
and is rolled down to occlude the line and decrease the rate of infusion. If you look, you will see the IV fluid rapidly draining into the drip chamber, and as the wheel is rolled down, the rate of infusion decreases. If the wheel is completely down, the line will be completely occluded. You may then roll the wheel back up from the locked position until the desired drip rate is reached. If we have a drip rate set and want to occlude the line, we can use a slide clamp. This makes it so we can stop and restart an infusion without having to reset a drip rate. Be sure to manually recheck the drip rate once started again. Now we will practice calculating and setting a drip rate. We have an order for 1000 milliliters to run at 200 milliliters per hour. We start our equation knowing that we have a rate of 200 milliliters per hour. Most often, and in this case, you will be dealing with a macro drip system which delivers 15 drops per milliliter. Alternatively, you could have a micro drip which is 60 drops per milliliter. Be sure to read your packaging. We multiply by one hour or 60 minutes. Cancel like terms and we will get 3,000 drops over 60 minutes or 50 drops per minute. Since we are using a dial of flow on this administration set, we can set our drip rate at the ordered 200 milliliters per hour by simply turning the dial to 200. After setting the drip rate, we still manually check the rate by counting the drips in the drip chamber, which we have calculated to be 50 drops per minute. Counting the rate can be achieved by counting drops for 15 seconds and multiplying by 4. This concludes the IV fluid setup and calculations video.